some very very glamorous lives we're right here in Bray at the uh, Albert Walk. I forget the name of the casino, but look, look and rock and roll. I'm here. With, I'm here with the beautiful Luke. Congratulations, Luke. The, the reviews for 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 the Lonely Battle of Thomas Reader are slightly outrageous. Variety said that it's the future of documentary, which is kind of a nice thing to uh, put on a poster to put on a trailer. When did you? I don't know. When, when did you sort of get first to get involved? Did Fergal come to you with it? Did you sort of notice it in the papers or? Well, Fergal and Ty, who are sort of the collaborators behind the film, and they've been a team for a long time. We're all friends of mine, and they asked me to come on board as producer uh, pretty close to the start of the process right. um, and I was delighted to they're unique filmmakers good guys and they've got a very specific voice and way of looking at the world so I was curious to work with them and then, and then I think it was a really good blend the three of us actually it turned into a, a, a healthy healthy creative tension <laughs> at the heart of it at the time you know? <laughs> but, uh, I you think it got the, film to the right place you know? right now we should mention Here's a 55-year-old leak slip farmer. He's, he's, he's happily eccentric. He, he likes his Dallas. He collects his VHS tapes. He's a bit of a hoarder. He's also, to some people, a 72-acre farm. He's got a protected home. The IDA are very keen to get it. It's worth a few million. And he decides, you know what? No, I'm going to stay. So I'm guessing when it came to approaching him and asking him to be involved in something as modern as a documentary would have been a bit of a hard task to convince him that he's in safe hands, that this is not some sort of voodoo, that it's uh, you're going to be on his side, as it were. How long did that take? Very much so. I mean, Fergal uh, first contacted Thomas, and then it was six months before... Uh, and what year would this have been now? Like, was this oh, going back a few years? 2015, or? 14, right. maybe. Okay. Yeah, 2014, maybe. And um, yeah. it took six months for Fergal to get permission to take a photograph. Wow. Fergal's a photographer by background. He worked for a lot of newspapers. Right. And... Um, and then another few months before the filming began. Right. But it's a funny thing. I think once the trust was earned, Thomas proved to be a very good collaborator and from the point of view of, you know, very comfortable in a lot of ways in front of the mm. camera, always interesting looking. Right. He lives in a very interesting space. Um, and now that trust did have to be earned every day, though, I think it's fair okay. to say. I remember Fergal saying that. You kind of started again almost every morning with him. <laughs> Well, but you think of that Grey Gardens thing where it would have been so easy to, to ridicule these two right. eccentric women who, who obviously, you know, have a very dance with a very different drum sure. beat. So in this case, when, when you've got somebody who is eccentric, again, in the editing, in anything, you can you can portray him any way you want. You could make this yeah. quite comical. I mean, was it, was it, you know, I don't know, was it something he was aware of that this is possibly not going to come across right? Was that the struggle? I don't know what his... I think he's more someone who because of the issue with his land and the forces that he regards as being ranged against him you know the IDA Intel Kildare yeah. County Council etc I think there's just a general mistrust of the world so right. I'd say it was more that that provoked his kind of concerns but right. the Ray Gardens comparison is interesting because I suppose there is moments of humour in the film but you're laughing with Thomas and I think Fergal's a sensitive and conscientious filmmaker and he wouldn't want to be poking fun at sure. Thomas you know yeah. and that's and, a, that's yeah. the line that's walked with great skill I think in the film you know? I think the audience would, would smell that straight away and that would ruin yeah. any kind of trust you'd have as a, as a storyteller and you know it would be seen in a very different light that it's not very you much know. so yeah. and I mean TV is full of people being mocked all yeah. the time and it's probably one of the more unattractive aspects of modern culture. So Ireland's got talent. We're talking about, right? <laughs> Does it? No, I hadn't noticed. Um, see, there you go. I'm doing it too. Yeah. But no, I mean, I think Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. For me, what was fascinating most about him was that he was a man without a price in a world where everyone seems yeah. to have a price. Thomas doesn't have one. Right. And that probably epitomises his his nature. You know, not interested in money. No, we don't want to give any uh, great big plot uh, twists away and all that. But I know that, that uh, when it comes to filming, you, you, like you had actors, for example, playing the lawyers, you had transcripts of the court cases, and you kind of reenacted these on, 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 on the farm. Area. Again, a kind of a, a, an interesting choice. I don't know whether Thomas kind of got that straight away, whether that was a hard sell to say, well, we're, we're going to, you know, recreate some of this. We're going to have to, you know, it's storytelling. We're going to have to yeah, do a little funny. poetic. I, I didn't, I, you know... It, it, we, were, we had a lot of trepidation about that for all sorts of reasons, not just how Thomas would respond. Like, it's, it was a very high-risk ploy, you know, to, yeah. to, to engage in in the middle of a documentary and could have fallen flat, couldn't have worked, mightn't have worked. Right. But I think with films, if you take big risks, you can win big. And 
it feels like it really does have it has worked I mean people right. really engaged with it well and Thomas engaged with it well I mean Thomas acts in the film at one stage and does a pretty decent job of it like so yeah no I'm really pleased with how those things work out now as I mentioned Variety went crazy on it a lot of uh, great reviews I, I, actually the Dublin Film Critics Circle made it their best Irish film that's right that's a circle I actually started many years ago no, anyway, brilliant there fantastic you go. Well, so, there you um, go. so that must feel I don't know whether you feel as as, as filmmakers you've got your own film coming out as a director Virgil's working on his second film uh, Tiger as well Tiger's right? film coming there you out go. Yeah. It, must have, it must have felt like you moved up the food chain a little bit that this is actually a great calling card because people like it and, and love it and, and sort of yeah, know you can I, do well, this absolutely I suppose I've done a lot of television and um, for me it was just interesting being in that cinema world and international festivals and meeting other people of the same sensibility that you didn't think were out there and they actually were so it's not so much a calling card it's just that kind of refreshing and that re-energizing of yourself you know by doing something that's a bit out of your comfort zone that's what i really got from you i think probably the most important audience member is thomas himself he would have had i mean i think you mentioned this to me before he had certain you know trepidation about it so he was going to be you know, you don't know until you see it up on the screen right. what way it's going to play, if it's going to you're yeah. going to look good or bad or indifferent. But he has he has come along to screening, so he's obviously absolutely yeah he's obviously happy with it and feels it it, it told his story and that he's uh, fairly represented. With I say. think so. I think yeah. so. I mean, I think there was understandable anxiety there, but yeah. he um, came to the Kildare premiere in Nice, which was brilliant. Like it was just a brilliant right. evening, and it was his first time in a cinema in 30 years, <laughs> hey. which is something else to be. After yeah, a break yeah. like that to go and see a film about yourself <laughs> must be pretty mind melting. But it was, as he said himself on the night, he said it was like water off a duck's back. He, yeah. Not a bother on him. And he really appreciated the interest people have in his story. Right. And I think he's become a certain per personage around the Maynooth League slip area. And you know, that's not an easy thing for someone like him, who's right. quite a sort of hermetic character. So. You know, I think for him to feel reconnected to the people around him has been one of the best things about the film. I know yesterday's Irish Times had the cover story that Intel have a seven right. million dollar plan to uh, about to happen. Million, I think. Oh, yeah. there you go, seven million. I, I, just, I, I should have written that down. But that idea that we're dealing with, you know, uh, like you know, the David and Goliath, which is at the core of this story, right. constantly in, in this world, especially this as, as uh, corporations kind of get bigger and stronger. Is that something that you you feel? Part of the film was to sort of let that be known that there are individuals out there and we should be glad that they're there and we should protect them or i don't know whether it was just i don't know if there's some other kind of feeling that it's more just this is an interesting story full stop i think with films documentaries like this when they work well they sort of have teams that emerge from them right they work on a number of levels and that's what this film does for me is that you have a portrait of an eccentric man living a very traditional life right. you have a David and Goliath story but you also have this question of Ireland's relationship with multinational corporations and you know how, how did we become a tax haven uh, for these corporations and, and why are we enabling the most sort of rapacious capitalists on earth by letting them do their thing here uh, with such impunity and, and that's something I think that uh, the film tackles in a sort of oblique way you know right. not in a kind of obvious sort of hectoring way which right. sometimes you know documentaries can be a little uh, there's a subtlety to this one and I can say this because I'm only the producer not the director because <laughs> <laughs> self praise is no praise but no genuinely I think the thing that I've got most from the experience of showing the film is that it provokes a lot of thought in people good man <laughs> <laughs> it, provokes, it provokes thought and that's right. probably what you want the documentary to do more than anything I suppose the final thing is you, you like the film right? Yes, of course, yeah. Good man. <laughs> That's the right answer. Come and see it on Wednesday night.